in 2015, uh, you bought the hockey team, the Mavericks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What inspired that? What brought that about? Um, well, Kansas City, uh, where we live, they have the, obviously the football and the baseball. Uh, major League franchises, already Major League Baseball, National Football League. They do have an MLS team, Sporting KC, and the Mavericks was there, and it was something we were able to bring local ownership in. It was a, a very reasonable deal. I've always enjoyed the sport of hockey. Um, it's, it's really great live. I, it, you know, TV is TV, but it's a really good sport. It's very engaging live, especially when you see how fast it is and the, the thinking and the movement that goes on. And um, it, you know, sports can be a platform, and that's kind of what we've used it for. We've we, we we've we've been, uh, you know, it's been good for us because we're, we're we're profitable as a team. We have a great audience, great crowds. Uh, we do a really good job of really doing things in the community. One of our partners, for example, would be Boys and Girls Club, which is something that's near and dear to my heart. Meeting these kids after school, where they are, giving them some structure and purpose in their lives. It changes their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's many organizations, but we'd be partnered with those sorts of things. And I, I think, you know, we're honored to be able to give back to the community. Uh, obviously for the young men that are playing the sport, they have dreams. We've had probably eight or nine players go on and play in the National Hockey League. Uh, one or two have played in the Stanley Cup, so that they, they had a touch point with the Mavericks at one time. So there's that sort of like, in a sense, like minor league baseball, those players that fight their way through all of this. And yeah. many of the young men that we've met are um, wonderful. Uh, and uh, you know, some of them are having to think about, okay, my dream didn't happen, I'm gonna pivot out. Most of them have college degrees, which is a very impressive thing. So we're able to, to help them on a number of different levels, and we're, we're very proud of that. It's a great little sport for Kansas City. It fits our niche. What's it like for a player, you know, whether it's hockey or baseball or football? Um, what's it like for a player the day they either realize or the day they are told uh, you can't play anymore? You know, I'm real good friends with the Chiefs Hall of Famer, Will Shields, a wonderful man. And uh, he's been so nice to be a part of some charity things. And I asked him that question one time, I asked him a question one time that was basically, what, what was it like to prepare for life after football? And he said, he said, starting when he was in high school and maybe even junior high, he had this sort of height weight, dimensions that people were already identifying, this guy is going to be a really good high school football player, and he's going to be a really good college football player, and he probably will be a pro. You know, they, they project these things out. So he said that from really starting early in high school, every day was programmed for him. Now, he got his education. He has his college degree. He's great. But he said every day was programmed. And so then he got drafted by the Chiefs. I think the second game of, of his career, he's plug and play. He has, a, I don't know how many starts, a hundred and some odd starts from then on. Hall of Fame career. And he said, then the day I woke up when I didn't have football, he said, it was strange because there was no schedule. Mm. And he said, now he said, I had been preparing for some of that because I knew it was coming. But he said, that's the thing. You get sort of locked in to this team you're part of something, and then one day you're not, and you've got to have a plan. So I think for the players that have plans, have ideas, have other dreams, other hopes for their lives, and they do, they do, but they want to live, they want to live this part out while they're young, um, it works really well. For others, it's a harder transition. Transitions are difficult in life. We yeah. all know that. And that's, again, it's, it's the truth. It really is. Whether you're having your first child or you're going from high school to college or college to the work world or, what, or marriage, these are big transitions. Those first jobs or whatever or pivoting in a career, that's really what it's like for these guys. In the case of the hockey players, many of them cannot remember even learning to skate. They mm. just, that was just part of growing up. It was like walking. <laughs> you don't remember when you learned to walk, really. I mean, they were a little older, but maybe three or four. Yeah. So, so it's a big deal at age 27 or 28 to say, well, 
I've got to get practical here and and find another course in my life, another route that I need to go on. And I think for the football players, it's for all sports athletes, it's that way. You're going to actually work more in your life outside of the sport than you did in the sport. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of teams now have preparation. They have people that will help you, guide that, mentor you or coach you or direct you, which yeah. I think is important. We're seeing some interesting things at the moment in the world of sport. You've got Serena Williams. I mean, two legendary tennis players, Serena Williams and Roger Federer. Oh, yeah. Um, retiring, you know, definitely nowhere near the peak of their game and, and, and probably not retiring when they want to retire. But um, certainly in Federer's case, you know, he has a persistent injury that... Yeah, he um, does is just going to prevent him from getting back to the top of his game. And then you've got Tom Brady who uh, retired. It was essentially at the top of the world and then has come back. And so who knows what might happen between now and when he retires and what that might look like. Um, do you think some players know when to uh, hang it up and some players want to hold on to it for as long as possible or what what is the psychology of that sure i mean it's tied to our identity of course and comfort zone and achievement and things like that two people that i know very very well one is named chris godfrey who played for the new york giants and uh, has a, a ministry called life athletes um, he lives up in the great bend not Great Bend, I'm sorry, Great Bend is where my wife is from, but a big, uh, what's the one? South Bend, Indiana, he lives up there. But he he said he went to training camp and he, he, he there's a picture of him holding Bill Parcells on his shoulder after the Giants won a Super Bowl and he had a, a, a really fine career as a guard. Um, and he went to training camp and I think he started and he said, and I don't, I don't know how old he was, he was probably mid to late thirties at the most and he goes, I just don't want to do this anymore. And he, he was done and he told him, I'm going to go ahead and retire. Mm. And so that, that, that story for him is, is the way it was. The other one I know really well is Bill Kenny, who really set all sorts of passing records for the Chiefs. Now he was purely a pocket quarterback, but he, he said to me once, and he's a guy more my age, but he said, I said, well, how did you know? And he said, I went back to pass and I found out I didn't want to get hit anymore. He said, I couldn't, I wasn't mobile to begin with. And he said, I started thinking about getting hit and I couldn't read the field anymore. Mm. And he said, I was just done. And so, and uh, he set all sorts of Kansas City Chiefs passing records on bad teams. He played all through the 1980s and uh, as a great person, you know, but has a whole, you know, carved a whole nother career for himself, house building and things like that. But th those two kind of hit that point. So others, I think it's part of your identity, you know, and for Tom Brady, it's an amazing career. Um, I can't speculate, you know, to the ins and outs of that. He, he can still play pretty darn well. Uh, for Roger, I think it's the chronic injuries. Yeah. Um, that's tough. And I think that's just a sign that, you know, like my friend Chris Godfrey, I just can't physically do this anymore. And I think Roger knows it makes a lot of sense. And uh, But it's still hard. I mean, you, you face the unknown. Even if you, you have great achievement, great wealth or whatever it could be from it, what do I go do? Yes. I'm so used to being geared and wired and ready for these matches. And they're competitive. Yeah. I get it. Yeah.